Well, welcome into Game Day TV, everyone. And Max, we started with the Auburn fight song, pictures of them rushing the the uh, the stadium. Jay, Jay Jacobs said he'd be happy to write another two hundred fifty. I think it's about check. a dollar per head. Yeah, is what it costs to write that. And I right. don't blame him. I said, you know, I, we watched that thing. You and I watched the game together, and it was really kind of coincidental at the end how all. And I was challenged this morning about from some Alabama fans and. You know, they had to pay two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Don't you think that was a problem? I said, I said, it's y'all fault. That's right. I said Alabama's won so many of those ball games, the people just got really caught up in the moment. Well, but, when they beat number one team in the nation two weeks, right. two out of the last three weeks, that's that's well, an accomplishment. It is. Now they got to go. You know, they got to go to Atlanta and try to do right. it again. So right. I, you know, that's going to be very interesting. But we had a great time, and what a great weekend for college football. I'm excited about where we are right and now. And what if it comes back around to where there is a possibility that Auburn Alabama meet? again. Yeah, you know, that's a, I mean, it's a possibility. I'm going to see and be rear, and you know this, on, uh, as this show wraps up today, we're going to talk about the, the brackets and how they look. Right. If two schools from one conference get in, to me, that's going to, the perception around the country from the committee, they're going to have to expand it because they're going to be somebody left out. It's just like basketball. You know, that number 66, 67, 68 team, right. they all complain because they should have been in. Well, number 5, 6, 7, 8 think they should be. Right. And you and I have talked, this may be the beginning of an expansion oh, I don't or think certainly any talk about it, it an expansion to, to 6 or 8, probably 18 And it depends on how they, they, it depends on what Wisconsin, Ohio State does this weekend. If Oklahoma should struggle and TCU win that one, that's going to cause a lot of chaos. The committee is always and has been reluctant to put a two-loss team in the top four. Well, they go have if Auburn wins a the conference, they got to put a two-loss team in there right, because right. the SEC is going to be in the playoff. Yeah, well, I know this weekend your phone been blowing up. Ooh. We got coaching changes and where they're going and all that to talk about. But here's what's exciting: to has me. it been this many SEC no, coaches? I don't ever remember. That's it right. Too. And beyond that, the money. Right. Oh my gosh. Here's what I got to say. Hats off to Scott Strickland in Florida. They got their man. Right. Somebody said, well, Dan Muller was number three. No, he was number one. They just had to wait to get there to pass the hat, right. get the money up. <laughs> they got like $7 million a year to right. go to Florida. Well, that's why he didn't go the first exactly time because they right. were offering him five. Exactly right. And so he was smart enough just to wait it out. He said, I can stay a start for 4.5 and that's just right. live great, you know. Well, there's so many coaching vacancies in the SEC. Is there a chance you might just jump back in there? Uh, They've been I, calling I talked to my friend this morning yeah. down at LSU. And right. The fact is, I asked him point blank. I said, "What about the get back coach?" I said, "You know, that's been my favorite." He said, "You're too old for that." He said, "I had to sit down on the sideline Saturday night, and we saw Pete right. Jenkins on the sideline." That's right. Okay, we got a packed show, everybody. We're gonna take a break. We're gonna come back. We're gonna break down the Alabama Auburn game, high school, everything. We got a great show for you here on Game Day TV. We'll be right back. The unexpected. The inevitable. The inconvenient. Life can be difficult. Make it a little easier. Alpha Insurance. At Central State Bank, we are more than your local branch. Our digital lobby offers you the same great service you receive at our local offices, all from the convenience of your phone or home. Use mobile deposit, online banking, mobile wallet, and more. It is easy, convenient, and secure. Come by and see your personal banker or find out more at centralstatebank.com. This is just another way Central State Bank is large enough to serve you and small enough to know you. never in a million years thought that I would ever 
have to utilize a Ronald McDonald house. It meant the world that I was able to stay so close to her. And she was never alone. Thank you from the Chepkowskis family. Make your vehicle a rolling billboard or a one of a kind by changing the entire color by adding a high quality vehicle wrap. Sundown Vehicle Wraps is the premier vehicle wrap company in central Alabama. Our extensive knowledge makes us the leader in vehicle advertising. Whether you're a small business looking to increase revenue or a stabilized company looking for guaranteed visibility for your company. From design to installation, our team delivers with innovative graphics that are guaranteed to turn heads at an affordable price. Visit us on the web to start your next vehicle wrap project. All right, we promised you a packed show. We got it, Max. I tell you what, you know, it's hard being in the studio when your producer is an Alabama fan. Let me just put it that way. No, you know what? But everybody's got their priority. You know, and That's all right. this thing, Jerry, is the perception on how you come across, right. how you deliver what you have to say. Right. We can be just as kind and gentle to either right. side. It doesn't matter to That's us. Right. Here we are. Well, you had your red coat out expecting to wear it. You know it. that. So, you know, we would have done it either way. So we're, we're, we we're came right well down the road. prepared. We did. But uh, I wouldn't be surprised. If y'all see some little elephant hopping across the screen, <laughs> you can blame it on Philip. Okay, Max, let's start. We're going to. Oh, man, my goodness. This is just a, this is the worst that it's been all year. We're going to start with Tennessee. Well, that's the worst it's been all year right <laughs> there. With right. The, you know, I, I'm not sure. Not only did they fire Bush Jones, I'm not sure Curry. Uh, might not fall in that category. The decisions he's making, and I'm not saying they're right or wrong uh, with their selection process, but, yeah, I will say this. Perception is reality. You and I sit in your den yesterday afternoon right. as we prepared for the show today, and we went through, and I've never seen a backlash from an announcement. Now, the, the fact is I don't even know – that the, that the contestants were, haven't even visited the campus. They were recommended by our board of trustee members. We all right. have read the background on that. But Jerry, 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 that I'd never bad. seen. So they canceled it. They canceled the contract or the potential offering of a contract. Right. So Tennessee's back open right now. Uh, I'm going to be in. I watched them play the other night. Vanderbilt is not a good football team. They end up going five and seven this year. And Derek Mason has done as good a job with what he's got, I think, as can be done. But the other side of that is that – Tennessee was the worst. Uh, they, I don't say they've quit, but they've quit. Uh, they, you know, they, they just know that they haven't done. And here's what's so amazing. If you remember three weeks ago, everybody was expecting, expecting the uh, Board of Trustees to make an announcement about Butch Jones at that time. Right. What did they do? They came out the next day on a Friday. I remember us talking about it the next Monday. The big, the big announcement was not changing the head coach. The Stadium expansion and three or four hundred million dollars to spend, and I'm thinking, guys, have y'all been to the last game? And <laughs> hey, fill it up then. Right. So, and it all depends on Tennessee ends up with eight losses this year. They were zero and eight in the conference. They were four and eight overall right. in the history of the school. Jerry, never has a team from Tennessee lost eight football games. How in did year. Butch Jones let it get that bad? Well, He's not that bad of a coach, is he? Well, you can only – well, Was it the that, people that surrounded him I, I or think what? You, you answered your question easy. I know. Uh, <laughs> because the, all you got to do is look at the evidence. Right. The team got worse since he was there. Uh, the recruiting class – here's why you know that. Three of his five recruiting classes was ranked in the top ten. Right. Two of them in the top five. Where did those players go? You know, right. they, 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 did he coach them down or did he put them on the bench? We don't know what happened. Something internally has happened to that program right now, and it's going to take somebody this, I mean, strong as iron and a thick skin and have to make some hard decisions on that to clean that program up. And I just hope Tennessee will make the right choice and give them the leeway to clean the program up. We talk about SEC schools all the time that have the ability to recruit yes. maybe better than others. Florida yes. is yeah. one of those schools. They have the ability to get the best players Very out of true. state. Tennessee's the same way. way. Alabama and Auburn, to a point, they fight each other. But yeah. it's, it's less in those two states, in Georgia too. But moving on to Florida – Another disaster. Where have those players well, gone? Well, see, they've they've gone. They they made bit wrong decisions. I I've followed that program since I was in the state of Florida recruiting part of my career. I've followed that situation at Florida, and you go back and look, and Jim McElwain had a, a different he. His confidence level was beyond his ability, if that makes sense. Gotcha. His confidence level, he could take – in fact, he he made a statement when they first hired Jim at at Florida, saying, "Hey, I can take a, a bunch of dogs and win here." Right. Well, obviously. 
I don't want to be derogatory, but right. he had a bunch and he didn't win. <laughs> right. Uh, my right. point is wrong decisions. Right. And he was trying to take. We just used the grading system that the colleges use a three star, and that's that's about a mediocre player that can make it. Uh, Dak Prescott was a three star coming out of Mississippi State. Got right. him, to, you know, to. Uh, Our Darius Stewart at Alabama, Alabama was, was a three, a three star. star, and they coach him up. That's they right. Coach him up. But here's the deal: if you don't, you got what you saw on Saturday. And that's what's happened at Florida. They didn't coach them up. They made wrong decisions. They didn't take, and how do you do that? And, and let me compare the Tennessee and the Florida situation quickly, Jerry. You're sitting in a state with 250 prospects in Florida. You ought to be able to get 18 or 20 of them every year right. to come to the state university. Tennessee didn't have 50. You know, they, go, they have to go up and down the coast. They've got to go to Florida. Jim McElwain had contacts in all those areas. They did, excuse me. Bush Jones had sure. contacts in that area. They, he came from Central Michigan, Cincinnati, from the Midwest, Chicago area. Right. He never went to those areas to recruit. Now I don't, I don't, I don't quite get well, all that. Kentucky. I mean, they what? have done that though. Right. They go into Chicago and bring those kids. That's right. Here's, here's Mark Stoops, guys. You know, you're a great player, but are you gonna stay up here and go to Northwestern or go to Notre Dame, boy, where it's right. 20 degrees when you get up there? Oh, you can come to Kentucky, yeah. where we got the racehorses. You know, you right. got the bluegrass out there, and the average temperature is 65 degrees. Right. Which one you want to go? That's right. Smart guy. The other side of that is some people just do not take advantage of the resources. And that's one thing at Tennessee, Butch Jones did not. I'm not saying he's a bad coach. He made wrong decisions. And I think it was very evident in the talent level. All right. Well, walking off the field at Arkansas, they, they just let him go walking off the field. <laughs> I think that was the right way to do it. He got to go in and tell his team right then. Right. It, it eliminated a lot of controversy after the game and then the next day. Some people got on to Arkansas. There's a, a lady athletic director now claiming she's going to hire the next coach. Which is bogus, but that's okay. I want to tell you. Here's it's the deal. messed up up D there. Don't, don't really believe everything you had. That was orchestrated mm -hmm. from day one. The, the meeting was held with, with Brett Bielema two or three days before. That was all orchestrated. If you, and the reason you know that, watch this after game press conference. He recited all his history, how the program had changed, and he did leave the program in better shape than he found it. But the fact is, if he's a very emotional guy. I didn't see one tear. I didn't hear one break up in his voice. I didn't hear any of that. That told me quick, hey, this guy's rehearsed his speech already. So it was done there. It was, everybody knew it was coming. He knew it was coming. Jeff Long was already gone, the athletic director that hired him, and Jeff had kind of protected him through the years, and I think that's the way it should work. But the fact is, is is Brett's another guy that couldn't recruit to the style of play that he has to compete against. He came out of the Big Ten, had a great record at Wisconsin, been to the Rose Bowl three times, won it a couple of times, had done that. But the style of play they run at Wisconsin is two backs in the backfield, six or seven offensive linemen, and run straight up. You can't get that many players to come to Arkansas right. to run the same thing. Right. So consequently, he was a victim of his success prior to coming to Arkansas. That job, by the way, this morning is still open. Uh, today it's still open, and we'll get a chance now to, to follow that. The, you know what the rumor is, is – yeah, we'll get into that. We in just got a few so months. many rumors. It's hard for us not to say the rumors, it, but you hate to go on TV you can't do that. Yeah. and do it. But y'all all heard the rumors as much as we have. We just don't have it confirmed, so we're not going to say no, it. No, you can't. And, and you know, and, and this time of year, it's in fact, what did Dan Mother? This is a silly season. Right. Everybody's got right. somebody going somewhere. We don't know what's going to happen. Arkansas, in my opinion, ought to go right across the river over to Memphis and get my, uh, Norvell. Uh, Mike Norvell has done as good a job as anybody. Do you anybody. think Norvell would come to Arkansas? Oh, he, he's from Arkansas. Okay. He played right. at Central Arkansas. Let me tell you, here's what the whole key to it is, Jerry. It's the recruiting. He's got more Texas kid on the Memphis roster than Arkansas does. So that tells you he can go into Texas and recruit the top players. Right. The, I, we all know the rumor, and I, I, you know, we know that there's some personal contacts there with one of the coaches in the SEC that rumored that he may go back home, but he's still playing for a championship. Mm, right. and we won't get into name calling, but everybody knows that story. I'll say this to you: uh, if Auburn wins this weekend, they better go hire him a coach. That's all I can say. Right. That thing is getting cloudier. You know that it's getting cloudier right. and cloudier uh, as the days go on. So right. I don't know what they're going to do at Arkansas. They have to have a change. They had a lot of injuries. They didn't have enough talent to compete. Uh, Bielema had a losing record in the SEC, and you can't do that and, and stay as a head coach. Okay, we could stay on that the rest of the the hour, but let's move on to Ole Miss. And I'll tell you, Max, before you start with Ole Miss, I saw all the things on social media. Yeah. 
claiming Ole Miss was targeting and going yeah. after Mississippi State and all that. But the fact is, they won the ball game. They did. The fact is, they're still messed up. But maybe well, Luke's going to stay and there. We don't, yeah, and, and again, I think we talked about that. I, why Matt Luke was named the coach uh, over the weekend is the very reason is this. Not that he didn't want that and not that he doesn't deserve that, but the fact is they put the they put the feelers out. They couldn't find anybody else that wants the job right, right. now. And the reason is, I don't know where it's NCAA. They continue to drag on with the sanctions. They've waited five years already to go, and that's almost unheard of. The I think the rule, the interpretation of the rule, when a, a school is under investigation and receives the letter, you have about 24 hours to, to file the letter and make it public. I'm, I just have this feeling that Ole Miss is holding that letter for some reason. <laughs> I think they wanted to get everything settled down, get the egg bowl out of the way, get the new coach in place, or in this case, just take the interim off Matt Luke's name. And he's become the head football coach, and then they'll release it maybe this week sometime. Uh, I think it's going to be worse than, than anticipated, and I think that's the reason they wanted to keep somebody from within that's been on the pro. He's been on the coaching staff there 10 years. He played there. He understands the lay of the land, and that program's going to be down. You know that. Mm -hmm. and, and I'll agree. I, and, and he apologized. He, he did come right. out with an apology. But it, it was well-deserved. The apology did. The game was not very well played, and it was some things that went on with hits and, right. and, and antics off the field or at the end zone and on the sideline that should never take place in college football. Right. That's neither here nor there. I think that will be taking place in, uh, in, from the inside with a discipline. But the fact is, where does Ole Miss go from here? They will have to wait on the sanctions because they can't recruit. They got a couple of pickups this past weekend, but they only had like six or eight commitments and, and signing days the 20th of this month. Right. So, you know, that's, that's going to be a big – uh, really a big mess, and, and I'm, I'm proud for Matt Luke. I think he's the guy that can survive. Now, whether they keep him three years from now, the one loss record will determine that. I want to ask you a question I know the viewers would like to hear the answer to, and, and this is just why uh, they – they are, well, this question came from our buddy Stacy Mills down yeah. in Prattville, okay? He says, why aren't the presidents of the university on yeah. antics like happened Agreed. when Mississippi – uh, when Ole Miss player did what he did, and y'all can go Google that if you don't know what he did because I'm not going to tell you, yeah. but he did. Where are the presidents? Why aren't they down there stopping them? They're sitting up in the box. Let me tell you about college presidents. I spent 10, 15, 12 years, I guess, now at, the, at Division One and, and six or eight at Division II. Uh, they want to be out in front when everything's going well. They don't want the criticism. They don't want the image. They don't, want, they don't even want the authoritarianism that they would have to assert to, make that, to clean that change up. You know about what's going on with the universities to this level. Right. It's as, about as far left as you can go. Right. And Ole Miss is no different. Right. You know, just because they're in the state of Mississippi, uh, we don't need to get into politics right. this thing, but, but the I've been there. The point is is that they're representing the <laughs> university. They go out there and do that, and you don't hear a word out of the guy running the, reason the place. Is, the reason is they got somebody to blame it on. They can always okay. blame it on the coach. They can always do that. Okay. Now, they can blame it on the coach, and what they do, they went and rehired him. So, you know, how is that messed up right now? But you got to understand the politics of how those presidents got there as well. That's a whole another story. And uh, we'll get that in on our next segment. All right, let's move to Vandy because they're still under the hard hit. They are. De Derek Mason's under. You know, I think he's done as as good a job. His name, by the way, has popped up in a couple of schools in yeah. the in the in the Pac-12, Arizona State, for example. His name his name popped up there. He was at Stanford as a defensive coordinator right. uh, with Coach Shaw and him for a long time. He did a good job. He's a very articulate. He's very knowledgeable of the game. Always has good defenses. But again, it's Vanderbilt. The academic standards there. Are, are to the point where you can you can find some play you can't get 25 every year. They can qualify. You can get maybe get them to qualify to come to that, but they can't stay in school right. because the academic load is not watered down anywhere and not throwing any stones at anybody else. But there are right. certain curriculums within universities that allow certain level of students to to get by. Sure. Well, they don't have that at Vanderbilt. Right. So. Derek uh, Mason's done a good job. I don't. I have not heard one word. If he leaves, it'll be on his own. Uh, they, they were five and seven this year. Uh, they beat Tennessee by 20, uh, 40, what, 45 to 21 yeah. or something like that this past weekend. And they looked good doing it. But a lot of that Tennessee helped them look good. That's know, right. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. So Derek Mason, I think, is at Vanderbilt. The program will survive. I think he stays on another year or two. All right. Well, we demolitioned five schools there. We got more to go, including Texas A&M, Missouri. And, of course, we'll get back to some Iron Bow talk in high school. 
We'll take a short break. Follow us on Facebook, by the way, at Ask Game Day TV. You can watch the show there and see all the highlights from high school as well. We'll take a short break. We'll come back with more with Max Howell in just a moment. Home. It's where you take your time. Build the future. Make your memories. Celebrate. Come home. Alpha Insurance. You can travel all over and you won't find another town with our name or our frame of mind. So much to do. So much to see. The one and only. Thank you. I never in a million years thought that I would ever have to utilize a Ronald McDonald house. It meant the world that I was able to stay so close to her. And she was never alone. Thank you from the Chepkowskis family. Sundown 10 is the only company in central Alabama authorized to sell Autobond Super Optics Nanotechnology Window Tent Film. We are the best because we sell the best. With Hooper Optic, you get the first patented nano ceramic window film with three times more infrared rejection. It's 25 times more durable than competing films and 13 degrees cooler. This cutting edge technology provides remarkable performance and cool European styling, and you can only get it at Sundown 10 and Hoover. For the best window film installed by the best team, Sundown is the place to go. Welcome back into Game Day TV, everyone. Well, Max, let's just keep on going down the list. We've got some remodeling to do with Texas a and M. Well, yeah, the, the program's not that bad. They, yeah, they moved up and down the field, but evidently the administration at Texas a and M out at College Station thought it was bad. They fired Kevin Sumlin on Sunday of this week, uh, this weekend. Uh, but his overall one-loss record, it wasn't that bad overall, but a lot, most of those wins were out-of-conference wins. At the conference level, he's about 500. Uh, you can't stay in this conference at 500. Right. Here's the thing. We've talked about it, Jerry, over and over. There are two schools in this conference <clears throat> that is almost inexcusable not to have great talent on the field. One of them is Texas A&M. The other is Florida. Right. And both of them, what did they do? Both coaches are gone now because they right. didn't survive. Kevin Sumlin immediately, though, was I was told last night, was contacted by Arizona State because there's an opening there. Todd Graham was uh, dismissed at Arizona State. It looks like now that Kevin Sumlin may land. That's not a bad program out there for Sumlin to go. But also his name's popped up at Tennessee and among other places. So we'll get a chance to watch. Kevin came, and I've heard it probably explained the best I've heard, that he was a victim of his own circumstance. He came there with such a huge – confidence level from Houston where he had a great one loss record there and everybody was expecting. What did they do? The first year he goes 11-2. He had Johnny Menzel uh, on top of that. They beat Alabama in Tuscaloosa, if you remember. Everything was going right for Texas A&M. Then all of a sudden, uh, it appears that the recruiting classes that Sumlin brought in weren't quite the level of uh, the, his predecessor, let's say that. And consequently, they, uh, they've they gone down. They changed defensive coordinator. John Chavis came over from LSU. Uh, thought that was going to answer it, but that didn't answer the problem. So say all that to tell you there's a vacancy this morning. Now rumors has it, rumors has it that uh, the job has been offered to Jimbo Fisher at Florida State. And we know that, that they didn't end up with a very good year. They won five uh, this year. I think they got one more game. They may end up being bowl eligible, but they played Louisiana Monroe, I believe, this weekend as a makeup game. They'll get six wins out of that. What do they do? We don't know. Jimbo has been offered the highest paid coaching job in the Southeastern Conference. Higher than Nick Saban, higher than Dan Mullen now, uh, to go to Texas A&M. And I think we all recognize it is all about the money. Texas A&M is not shy in that, in that uh, area. 
Uh, they raised like four hundred million in a couple of weeks to expand that stadium out right. there. So they got some heavy hitters. Now finding the right guy though to come and put that program together and build it and go from there. That's why I say I think they've got a base, but they need what I call tweaking a little bit. They got to have a, another quarterback. They got to have a couple more offensive and defensive linemen, and they got to shore up the depth situation for them. We'll we'll get a chance, and we'll be talking about that over the next couple of weeks as that job becomes a, a fleet field. All right, Missouri. Everybody gets to stay at Missouri. Looks <laughs> Hallelujah. like. Hallelujah. They may bear. They, you know, they may right. build a, a statue for Barry Odom. <laughs> we had him fired the second. He was one in five, I and then he's won six in a row. They're seven and five right now, and look good doing it. Now, you know, I got to give. Arkansas credit. Arkansas scored 45. We talked about that last week. We laughed and said Arkansas would have to score more than 40. They did, but they still right. couldn't catch up. They lose 48-45, and that was, of course, Bielema's last job. Uh, and we thought that would be Barry Odom's right. last effort, too. But, no, Barry has resurrected that team. They're going to a bowl. They, that, from everything I've heard, their recruiting has picked up. Uh, this is – if you go back and look, and I, I was really unaware – of Barry Odom's background. As a player, he, he ended up coming to Missouri. The team was uh, about in the same situation that Missouri was this year and early on. He, he was elected captain. He, the emotional that he, uh, attitude that he brought to the team raised that level. He came back as an assistant coach, same thing, running up down the sideline like we've seen a lot of assistant coaches right. do, right. grabbing folks and all, and the, and the volume of wins went up. And now he's done that as a head coach. The guy, you got to look at him and give him credit. And we've talked about this before. Right. I don't know that the expectation that the University of Missouri is what it is at Alabama or Auburn, for example, or Georgia, or even Ole Miss, for example. But at Missouri, if he keeps going even at seven, five, eight, uh, eight four wins, they may build a statue for him. Right. I mean, the guy has done what he has to do to make this, you know, make his program work. So, again, tweaking, good recruiting class. Uh, they got to replace Locke. They're Drew Locke, the quarterback, who had a great game again. He'll go on to the NFL. But Barry Odom's good enough in recruiting. He'll find somebody else to build right. it. For. Let's uh, move to Kentucky. They have made a commitment to, to play they football. Have. They still disappointed. This well, year. they did. They, yeah, they played Louisville, and, and we talked about right. that last week. It's just too much speed talent at Louisville. Lamar Jackson had a, Lamar had th Jackson had three hundred seventy two yards by himself. That's running and throwing. The guys are probably the best talented athlete in the, in the country uh, at a skill position. But needless to say, Kentucky couldn't stay with them. Kentucky ends up seven five. They'll get a good bowl bill, a bid, and they'll take that one loss record and they'll go, as I said, they'll go to Chicago, they'll go up the East Coast, they'll go to Florida and recruit. And they've done a Benny Snell is their leading uh, offensive player, is a good running back, rushed for over two thousand yards this year, thirty eight touchdowns. They hope that he'll come back. Uh, I believe he's just – he's either a sophomore or a redshirt. If he's a redshirt sophomore, he'll have an opportunity because the rule says he has to stay three years after his high school graduating class. If he comes back, that will be the anchor for next year, and I look for him to do at least 7-5 and, and maybe 8-4 and four next year. All right, you and I have talked about Will Muschamp for yes. years. He's You referred to him as one of the guys running up down the sideline, grabbing he people was. doing all that. Yeah. He has calmed down. He has. And he's done a – Pretty fair job he in played, South Carolina. He did. He played Clemson this past weekend. Clemson has got a goal in mind. But, look, he's brought that team from what everybody out there in Columbia thought would be a 6-6. Six and six. He won eight ball games for them this year. They went 8-4 and four and played Clemson the first half pretty solidly. Just didn't have enough. Uh, as you know, the quarterback situation, the kid's from Alabama, uh, Jake Bentley, and he had a great – he had a really good year. He comes back. He's just a sophomore. He comes back. Will's got something. Will can go into Florida. He can go into Louisiana. He can go up and down the coast out of South Carolina. And uh, and I look for South Carolina to be back, uh, I hope, for their sake, more than eight wins next year. All right. Mississippi State <laughs> loses the Egg Bowl, followed yeah. by they lose their coach. Yep. Where do they go from here? Well, I think that's the major question right now. And the fact is, is uh, you know, and we talked about that. I, did I not say last week that I watched Dan Mullen and it looked like he – there was something different about him. He wasn't jumping up and down the sideline. He right. had his notes, was calling the plays, and did a good job. But he actually hugged some people. And right. he's not a hugger, if that makes sense. He just, you know, his body language was different. I think now maybe that that negotiation was going on. I'm, go I'm saying that to tell you. He knew he was leaving. Uh, I don't think that affected his preparation or the team. What affected the game was losing his first-team quarterback uh, in Fitzgerald. He was he goes down the first quarter, and now you know. And I, we reported, I believe, last week uh, that what had happened. Uh, or excuse me, a couple of the radio shows I was on, and we talked a little bit about that. I know off the air is that 
we thought that his ankle was completely demolished. Well, then the report came out. He came back on the sideline. If you know, he was the cheerleader doing a towel thing mm-hmm. and all thing for his team. And that's Nick, Nick Fitzgerald, who's the leading quarterback in, in uh, yardage in the conference at that time, that his ankle was just dislocated. Well, further review shows that it was a couple of broken bones. Mm-hmm. He is operated on, I believe, by this morning mm-hmm. or today. And that be the case, he'll be back. He won't play in the bowl game. He will be back for spring training. But uh, he's a 6'5", 230-pounder that has been coached way up. Uh, he only had one other scholarship offer coming out of high school, and that was to, to Middle Tennessee. Uh, so Dan Mullen has done the good job. Where do they go from here? They've got to find a football coach. And I've heard they've already made a couple of offers already uh, early on where they can get another an assistant to do what Dan did remains to be seen. But see, the difference in Mississippi State and a school like Florida or Alabama or Auburn is that you can win seven or eight there. The expectation is just not that high. Mm-hmm. Now, give Dan Mullen credit. He raised that expectation because he was successful. Mm-hmm. More bowl games in the nine years that he's been there than in the 50 years prior to him being there. So that tells you that he's done a good job. He's recruited well. He's got those kids in the state to come to Mississippi State and done a good job. They just have not named a coach yet. All right. The four top teams in the SEC, you got Auburn, Alabama, Georgia, LSU. Right. Start with Auburn. They coming off of perhaps their biggest two wins in, in the school's history. Oh, I don't think there's any doubt about that. And, and probably if you go back and look, there's not many programs in the country has done what they've been able to do. Two back-to-back, they were home games that played a major role uh, in Auburn's success. But look, Auburn – Auburn Tigers came to play the last two weeks. Does it remain to be seen going to Atlanta uh, this coming weekend? Can they do it to Georgia one more time? I'm going to say this, and I said it before, I think Auburn wins again, and I'll tell you why. I watched Georgia very closely against Georgia Tech this week. Their running game is the same. They're, they're pretty vanilla when it comes to that. Their freshman quarterback is going to be a really outstanding player, but he's still a freshman, and, and he doesn't do a lot of things – Let's say this, he's not a Jalen Hurts as a freshman. Right. He's not, and I use that as an example because Hurts led Alabama to a national championship game. I don't know that, I don't know that Fromm can do that. Uh, I think Auburn wins this ball game again, maybe not 40-17 uh, to 17, uh, as they did before. But the fact is, I think Auburn wins because there's more talent, and Georgia's still got some young kids. The maturity factor, though, at, at, at Georgia right now in that ball game, and I say that to tell you about Auburn, is the fact is is they got the two running backs. The offensive line has grown up, but Auburn's defensive front, Jerry, that's as good as it is in the country. And if you don't believe it, go around and ask. Ask. I talked to my good friend at LSU this morning. Mm-hmm. Uh, they just made, did some adjustment on the defensive front that confused Auburn. He, he, he told me this morning, without a doubt, Auburn was a better football team than they were. Mm -hmm. But the fact is they made some adjustments that Auburn had not seen before and was able to win the football game. Without that blemish on Auburn's record, and that was a loss to LSU, there would be no question about where Auburn Auburn would be at one or two, uh, worried about rather than worried about being four or five. So I I think that all being said, Steedham has been a a, a big source of improvement at quarterback. He's done some things. Chip Lindsey, in addition to offensive coordinator, you can see some things that he's been able to put in. I'm proud for Gus Malzahn that he's backed off and let, let Chip call uh, the offense, and they've been very successful doing that. So hats off to Auburn. They got, a, they got one more big game to see if they can get to the playoff, and it, then it remains to be seen with two losses in, a, in the championship of the SEC. Does that get them in solid? All right, so Alabama loses the Iron Bowl, and we all know that. Yep. But overall, Alabama still got a chance – they do. To be in the picture, depending on the outcome of the Georgia Auburn game, does. to be quite yeah, honest with it's, you. It's, it's, they're lemon one. They right. played well. But now, here's the thing about Alabama you got to look. Uh, there were some chinks in their armor going in. They didn't play well against LSU. They didn't play well against Mississippi State. They played well enough to win, but they were not the dominant force that we've seen. So uh, I think therein lies where some improvement really has to be made with Alabama. But I think, look, Nick Saban's capable of that. I don't think there's any doubt. He's probably politicking this morning, and I think he should be, to see if, in fact, there's going to be somebody else out there, maybe a Wisconsin that gets beat, uh, you know, maybe Oklahoma and TCU. I don't, there's a couple other games out there that mm-hmm. could make a difference. I think that personally think the committee will be very reluctant to put two teams from the conference, from the SEC, in the playoff. Well, they – 
we said for years they don't like the SEC anyway because they always it, win. So exactly the right. chances of two of them being in there. All right, yeah. finish up with Georgia and LSU. Well, just quickly for a with second. Georgia, we all know what Georgia's young. Got a right. freshman quarterback. They got a couple of young running backs coming in behind uh, behind Chubb. Uh, and Michelle, and I think they'll do that. The offensive line will mature. I think they've got only five or six seniors on that team. They'll be a much better football team next year. Hats off to Kirby Smart for where he's got them up to now. And then we go straight to LSU, the same thing. LSU played 20 freshmen this year. They got uh, – they, they played some players that couldn't play for some lower division team, but they got a lot out of them this year. And Ed Ogeron, hats off after he lost the game to Troy early in the season. Everybody in, in Louisiana is ready to run him off. Now, you know, they may be on a statue to him. He's going to have ten wins. They got nine right now going into a bowl game. I promise you, uh, I got enough insight on the ins of the bowl games down there. Uh, LSU will win that one. All right, well, we're going to talk some high school. It's that time of year in high school as well as the brackets are now all filled in for the semifinals. 7A is finished. We'll, we know who's going to Bryant-Denny next week, so we're going to d discuss that as well. We'll take a short break. We'll come back with our high school segment right here on Game Day TV. How do you show love? With the big things? The little things? The tough things? Your everything. Show them you care. Alpha Insurance. You can travel all over and you won't find Another town with our name or our frame of mind So much to do, so much to see It comes down to this, it's easy to see There's just one in the world positively Tuscaloosa, the one and only Sportsmanship is the educational component derived from athletic contest. In sportsmanship enhances the character of student athletes because of the impact of the leaders of each sports team. Those leaders help develop the character of those student athletes to be displayed in times of adversity. Welcome back into Game Day TV. Max, you and I both involved heavily this year in high school football. Uh, we're going to start with 1A. We're going to hold that thought, but tell everybody where we're going this week as well. But uh, let's let's go ahead and put up 1A on the screen tell you about these brackets right here. Well, now, there were some winners in 1A that you and I did predict. That's let's right. Let's go ahead and get that out All front. Right. So 1A <laughs> will be Whiteley against Sweetwater. And what Max is referring to is Sweetwater beat Maplesville 26-21. to That's Maplesville's first loss in over three years, and they get knocked off there in the uh, quarterfinal round. So Wadley at Sweetwater. That game will be broadcast on 100.1 across central Alabama on FM uh, station there if you want to listen to it. On the other side of the bracket, the north side, you got South Lamar and Pickens County. Pickens County beat Cherokee 37-8, to and South Lamar beat Addison 34-20. to So there's your 1A report right there. We'll see how they shake out and who makes it to Bryant-Denny as well. Now moving on to 2A. In 2A, in the top part of the half of that bracket, Leroy uh, beat Laverne 38-20. to They advanced to play Goshen, who beat St. Luke's 56-52. to On the other side, up in the north part, Fife gets beat. 56 to, uh, I mean, check that, 
20, 35 to 28 by Sullivan, who is just right down the road from them. So congratulations to Sullivan. Uh, Sullivan, who will now play Fife, I'm going to get my act together in a minute, uh, play Sullivan and Lanier will play as uh, Lanier won as well. So that's your bracket in 2A as we'll move on now to the 3A bracket. Here's how the semifinals stack up there in 3A. Clark County will play Hillcrest Evergreen. Hillcrest Evergreen with a big win over American Christian 29-21. Clark County beat Mobile Christian 21 to 16, so Clark County and Hillcrest Evergreen. Randolph County beats Sylvania 55 to 24 and Piedmont beats Colbert Heights 34 to 13, so they'll square off on December the 1st as well. Now let's move right on into 4A. Bibb County traveled down to UMS Wright. They could not beat them. UMS Wright all over the Choctaws, 31 to 7. They will play Andalusia, who handled Alabama Christian, 45 to 13. In the north part of the bracket, Fayette County advances with a win over Hoax Bluff, 34 to 27, and Sachs beats Cherokee County, 42 to 14. So you got Fayette County traveling two Sachs to play that game. Now we will throw up 5A and gets a little more serious here in 5A because the, the scores are a whole lot closer in some of these games. St. Paul's beat Beauregard 52-20. to Beauregard without their big running back there, so that was their detriment. Uh, they advance on to play, surprisingly, Demopolis, who won 35-14 to over Viger. Uh, Max, I know you know a good bit about Viger yeah. in Mobile. They got a lot of talent, so... Demopolis has got something to go in there. And they be must have, and I, I don't. I've not run checks on how how long Demopolis has been this good. But if you go into Mobile and beat a team like Biger, uh they're for real. I don't That's think right. there's any doubt. All right, and looking over on the other side of the bracket, Winona and St. Clair County. St. Clair County comes out on top, 27 to 26. What a wild ball game! Briarwood Christian just continues to massacre everybody. They beat Etowah 31 to nothing. So St. Clair County is at Briarwood Christian this week in 5A in that division. Now moving on to 6A, this will get into a little bit of what we're going to be doing. I'll be calling a 6A game this week as, uh, well, let's talk about the other bracket first. First of all, Hillcrest Tuscaloosa beats Opelika in a thriller, 26 to 24, so they advance. Opelika will sit at home in the semifinals. We Tumpka rolls over Spanish uh, Fort, 69 to 41. Max, that sets up Hillcrest Tuscaloosa at We Tumpka. That's where you're going to be with Raycom. Well, Raycom will be there calling that football game. And I can't wait. You've already seen we Tunkle play this year. I have. Uh, we'll see uh, Smoke and his crowd yeah. uh, run them down the field. Well, I'm the sure. quarterback and the running back for we Tunkle, two great ball players. Uh, 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 can't remember his first name. Last name Smoke. He'll be on yeah. the on the running back for we Tump. Go look for them. But Hillcrest Tuscaloosa, as you'll find out, pretty good ball well, team they, as well. Well, you have to be this good to get you know good to get there to where right. we are right now, Jerry. So I, I've not have to cover uh, this year have not covered Hill Chris but anxious to see this ball game. All right, in this game that I'm going to tell you about Pinson Valley and Austin, Pinson Valley wins 51 to 50. I've got some stats in a minute I'm going to tell you. They beat the number 1 ranked team in the state, uh Austin, so they advance and then in the bottom half as fate would have it, Clay Chalkball, who nobody thought would even make it to this round, wins over Oxford 31 to 15. That sets up Pinson Valley and Clay Chalkball to be played at Pinson Valley. I'll be calling that game on the NFHS network. It's unusual to have your rival again yeah. this late in the playoffs, all the marbles. You know, you go back, and I, and I was fortunate enough to call Clay Chalkball once in one game this year already. Uh, you know, and kind of surprise that they've got because they're very basic. Right. But they line up, and I'm gonna tell you their defensive front. Um, you'll you'll be impressed. Their nose tackle is six foot five, six foot six, three hundred pounds. I've never saw less than two blockers trying to keep him out of the backfield. Sometimes he demands three blocks. That li lets the linebackers run free. Uh, by the way, already committed to Mississippi State. He's a typical Mississippi State defensive lineman. Well, that's going to be two great ball games in our state. We'll have them on the air. You can find it at Max if you want to watch his game with Graham Dunn. That's pathtotheplayoffs.com. Best way I can tell you to do it is go to YouTube and just type in Path to the Playoffs and watch it. Of course, it'll be on all the Raycom affiliates throughout the state. And then if you want to watch Pinson Valley play Clay Chalkville, I'll have that for you on the NFHS Network. You go to 
www.nfhsnetwork.com. Click on Alabama. It'll be the HSAA's game of the week there. Quickly in 7A now, here's they won't play this Friday because their semifinal game. But I call McGill Tulin at Central Phoenix City. I'm going to tell you more about that game. McGill came out on top. Max called Thompson and Hoover. Hoover came out on top 31 to 12. Max, let's just get into it. Those games were fantastic ball games. No doubt. And crowds were just, over, you know, it, it, we had a double dose this weekend. Yeah. Not only did we see great high school football with huge crowds, but then we flip over to Auburn on Saturday and we saw probably the biggest crowd in the state. Right. But, uh, you know, you go back and look, and I've been fortunate enough this year, I've already seen uh, McGill Tulin play uh, early in there. Uh, Coach Hill, their, their head football coach, right. is like 38 and 2 is a is a head is a head and assistant football coach at McGill Tulin. They lost 19 players off last year's team. Right, and, and the coach and the coach and they're still undefeated. Right, so that tells you about the depth of the program. But I have to say, having watched uh, Hoover play this year, I, I I'm going to say this and go way out. Uh, Hoover will have to help McGill Tulin a lot for for Hoover to lose. Right. Hoover's just. They lost three ball games this year, and I don't know how. Well, one of them was to IMG. <laughs> yeah, that's a junior college. Right. So, uh, and maybe, the other was the number, the number four or five team in America over in Georgia. Right. That was the other team they lost to. Right. And then they got beat by Thompson, uh, you know, at the, at the latter part of the season. Uh, that was kind of a revenge game, right. but it was really great high well, Let's get football. into that because you call that game. Uh, McCammon, the running back for Hoover, had 17 carries, 135 yards. Yeah. Uh, on the other side of the ball, the wide receiver for Thompson, I know you got a good look at him, Ahmad Edwards. Edwards. Uh, he set the state record uh, yes, in a season is. this yep. year with 125 receptions, 1,459 yards. He also had seven uh, catches for 42 yards in that game. Well, he he's, can got a, catch. he's got a quarterback can throw. That's now, right. I'll tell you that. Right, and I'm <laughs> getting to him. Well, while you said it, he took a low of the quarterback for Thompson. He ended the season 287 completions yeah. on 435 attempts. That's slinging the ball. 3,820 yards. That's the fourth best single season passing total of all time in the yeah. HSAA state history. He also threw for 36 touchdowns. Yeah, he did, and he was, he's a fantastic talent. Now, he's not a huge kid. He's a five 11 200 maybe uh, but he's got a he's got an ability to read the defense Jerry as good as any high school player I've ever seen and, and we talked with his high school coach as you recall a couple of weeks ago and right. he can make some throws that a lot of college kids can't make uh, he's he got super arm strength for his size and I don't know where all that's come from but I did go back and did a little homework on him he was coached in high school by a guy that I covered uh, happened to be a guy named June Jones, who was the head coach of the Atlanta Falcons for about six years. So he was coached by one of the best in the country, uh, who was the quarterback coach for the Falcons at the same time. So no, no disrespect uh, to the ability, but the fact is, is the guy has got some great knowledge, and uh, and he's just a junior, right. so he'll return next year for another year. All right, but Alabaster uh, um, uh, Thompson goes down in Alabaster, so. Talking about Hoover, Hoover's got a wide receiver, Pickens as well. He caught six pass 106. He's six foot six. But Jackson didn't catch any, even though the Auburn commit Jackson, who's right. Bo uh, Jackson's, Jackson's nephew. nephew. Right. The fact is that Pickens is six foot six, and all you do is throw it up and let him jump. And right. He is he's a real – he's going to Auburn. He's Auburn commit, along with Jackson. Uh, right. So, I, you know, they had – the other, other – one other great player on there that we didn't quick talk about was, was their field goal kicker. Right. Going to Nebraska. In fact, Coach Nippet told me before the ball game, any any time inside the forty, they ain't going for it on fourth. They just let him kick. He kicked one from about thirty eight yards that went over the building that's behind as far as the, the dressing room's concerned. Right, right. He's got a leg on him. He'll he'll make it he's going to Nebraska, by the way. By the way, that was the last game played at Larry Simmons Stadium. Yes. Thompson opens their new facility by next year's football season, so that's good. Let me tell you about McGill Tulin, uh, Phoenix City. This game was tied at the half fourteen off. Uh, Brian Hill, the running back for McGill Tulin, that's was really son. that's coach's son. Really, the workhorse. He got McGill Tulin uh, there. But the line score here is what was interesting to me. First quarter, it was seven nothing in the first quarter. McGill Central comes back, scores two touchdowns, makes it fourteen to seven, and then before the half, uh, Central ties it up fourteen all at the half. They come out. McGill Tulin gets a field goal. They get another field goal later in the game. The difference in this game was a field goal kicker for. Central Phoenix City, he missed an extra point. He missed a point-blank range field goal. And then the last, in overtime, they instead of going for two, Coach Dubos decided to tie it up, and it was blocked. So uh, Bryson Massey uh, is the kid that blocked that extra point. You know he'll live that the rest of his life. 
that put them in to the finals. Now, next week, I get to go see Bo Nix and company at Pinson Valley. Uh, just so you know, this past week, he was 31 to 39 for 400 yards and seven touchdowns, wow. including two two extra point conversions. I can just go on and on about him. But this ball game between him and uh, between them and Clay Chalkville, Drew Gilmer is the head coach now at Clay Chalkville. Uh, he's in his first year. He's done a great job there. And I uh, want to mention Terrell Coe, the wide receiver. He had 14 of. Uh, uh, for 44 yards, 14 receptions. Unbelievable uh, talent there as well. So all that to say, Max, this is the semifinals in 6A. You'll be and uh, we tough guy. I'll be at, at Pinson Valley. You can watch us there. Okay, we're going to take a break. We're going to come back. Uh, Kim Sher is going to have your weather report for this coming Friday night. And then we're going to wrap up some college. Still got a lot to talk about. We'll be back right here on Game Day TV. The unexpected. The inevitable. The inconvenient. Life can be difficult. Make it a little easier. Alpha Insurance. You can travel all over and you won't find Another town with our name or our frame of mind So much to do, so much to see It comes down to this, it's easy to see There's just one in the world positively Tuscaloosa, the one and only Make your vehicle a rolling billboard or a one-of-a-kind by changing the entire color by adding a high-quality vehicle wrap. Sundown Vehicle Wraps is the premier vehicle wrap company in central Alabama. Our extensive knowledge makes us the leader in vehicle advertising. Whether you're a small business looking to increase revenue or a stabilized company looking for guaranteed visibility for your company. From design to installation, our team delivers with innovative graphics that are guaranteed to turn heads at an affordable price. Visit us on the web to start your next vehicle wrap project. never in a million years thought that I would ever have to utilize a Ronald McDonald house. It meant the world that I was able to stay so close to her and she was never alone. Thank you from the Chepkowskis family. Well, guys, can you believe that this weekend is the beginning of December and the beginning of the Christmas season? I absolutely can't believe it's already here. For those of you still left in the playoffs, the football season's starting to dwindle down. But for some of you, you're playing this Friday night. A cold front's coming through, so the temperatures are going to be in the 50s all across Alabama. For northern Alabama, you're going to have a 20% chance of rain. And for central and southern Alabama, it's just going to be a 10% chance of rain. So hopefully it'll hold off. You'll have a great night for football. For all of you headed to Atlanta on Saturday, it's going to be a beautiful, sunny, clear day with temperatures in the 60s. A great day for travel and a wonderful day for football. We've had so much fun with Max and Jerry this season on Game Day TV. Thanks so much for allowing me to bring you your Game Day weather. I'm Kim Shearer, and I hope you and your family have a blessed holiday season. I want to thank Kim Sher for doing our weather report. That'll give you an idea of what to expect on Friday nights uh, and also over in Atlanta. All right, Max, before we talk about breakfast, I just want to mention two names. The end of an era with uh, Paul Bryant. Yes. Joy Jones uh, resigns at South Alabama and Mike Riley at he's, Nebraska. He's di dismissed at Nebraska. Right. Yes. So that right there were the last two Bear Bryant protégés 
uh, so to speak. That is so. an end of an era, and that's the legacy that Coach Bryant left. Not only a great football player uh, in, uh, at Alabama, a great coach at Alabama and Texas A&M and Kentucky and everywhere else he, he coached at, but the legacy of, of the number of players and coaches that work with him or for him right. is uh, is untold. But now this is it, – it's, uh, and I don't know how many other people have brought that out, Jerry. Right. That's uh, – that's something. I, I was surprised when Mike Riley, Riley left Oregon State to come to Nebraska. He lasted three years. That job's open, and we'll follow that story too. All right, let's move on now. We got. We know we going got Auburn at Georgia, the SEC championship game. Right. You've already mentioned you like Auburn. I think the line came out two and a half points. Auburn's favored. Right. I think it's going to be a close game. Oh, it is. It's a neutral field this time. Well, it's supposed to be neutral. George, I understand George is trying to buy up all the tickets. And they're going to pay a pre- pretty price. I talked to my buddy yesterday right. in Atlanta. Uh, basically, they start at a minimum of 300 bucks a piece if you're going in the front door. So, anyway, that's going to be an outstanding ball game. We've got Clemson-Miami. Clemson will be favored in that one. Oklahoma right. and TCU, Oklahoma will be favored in that one. And Wisconsin-Ohio State. Ohio State's got two losses. Wisconsin's still undefeated. Uh, I'm interested in the committee, interested in watching because the strength of schedule uh, is going to not play in Wisconsin's favor. They did not play a very strong schedule. That's why you got Georgia and Alabama sitting there just outside the top four. I think we'll get a chance now to see if Wisconsin stumbles at all. I don't think Oklahoma will worry about TCU. They've already beaten them pretty severely. And I don't think Miami can beat Clemson. So it's going to be Wisconsin, Ohio State. Ohio State's capable of beating Wisconsin. They got two losses, but I think they could do that. If they do, they won't put Ohio State in, I don't believe. But the fact is that Georgia and Alabama, one of those two, might have a chance to move in in the Final Four. Well, in Alabama, to be quite honest with you, they they weren't the best team on this past Saturday, but they only got one loss. They played pretty tough schedule, maybe not quite as tough as – and, of course, Alabama fans say, oh, yes, we did. But, you know, basically they drew a couple of teams that – that well, Florida, for example, this year. Right. Well, the the thing at Florida State, it, it, there's a big question, Jerry. Right. When they played Florida State, Florida State was two or three in the country. That's right. But they didn't win but five football games. So, do they evaluate them at the end of the year, Florida State, or at the beginning of the year? I think will make a major difference in the points uh, alignment where Alabama may end up. So, I think all of that's up in the air, and we'll find out coming up this next week. All right. You think Dan Mullen's going to do a good job at Florida? I do. I think he does. He's a developer of quarterbacks. You go back and look everywhere he's ever been. He's got five or six guys in the NFL. The, most late, the latest one was Dak Prescott as a rookie. Started for the Dallas Cowboys this past year. And he's already proven he can play at that level. Uh, he picked up Nick Fitzgerald out of Georgia this past year. Coached him up as a, as a freshman last year to play. Uh, the kid led the SEC in, in, in total offense, passing and running. And he was on track again until he hurt his ankle the other night. So yes, to answer your question, he'll do it. I think it's very important in who he surrounds himself with. Uh, Todd, Todd Grantham, I understand, is going to be his defensive coordinator, and Grantham made the difference in Mississippi State. They won nine ball games this past year, and they were p- picked to finish last in the SEC. All right, before we get to what's for supper, I want two uh, little notes here. Next week, we're going to have a very special guest. We, as you noticed all year on Game Day TV, we don't have many guests, okay? But this one is definitely worth having in. Don Staley, the Director of Tourism and Sport for Tuscaloosa, will join us in studio next week as we'll have him to talk about not only the Super 7 being played in Tuscaloosa, but everything else going on there as well. So uh, you want to make sure that you uh, tune in for that as well. And then the next week we're going to have Marty Staples on as well, again with uh, um, his uh, tips on tailgating. So just want to give you a little heads up of what's coming. And follow us on Facebook, by the way, at Ask Game Day TV. You can watch the show there if you you don't see it on Charter Spectrum uh, Channel 80. You can watch the show there. Plus, we have a lot of things going on on high school as well. Okay, Max, you got about a minute. It's time to cook some supper. What's for supper? Well, I'm going to take some of the leftovers. I'm going to do a big Brunswick stew. I'm a okay. big Brunswick stew fan, I'm going to tell you. And I use pork, chicken, and beef all in that. But I'm not going to use chicken. We'll use some leftover turkey okay. this time. And we're going to do it. We're going to put the corn and the potatoes and the onions and a little garlic powder in there. And, and we'll make a, a stew out of it. Put, do it in a crock pot. Because I like to cook it slow all day. You've done that before with roast and all that. Do it with stew. Let it stand. I got a little tip there. It's really better. Take it out. Put it in the fridge and let it stay a day. Right. The next day when all those flavors go together. Got a, on the side, I'm going to do jalapeno cornbread. Okay. Uh, you know I'm going to like that hot stuff that goes right there. I do a, a, a apple, raisin, and carrot salad uh, for my salad side uh, along with uh, my, my Brunswick stew. A big old pitcher of sweet iced tea. Yeah. You know we got to have that. Now, for dessert, 
Yeah. Now you got to love this. Yeah, I'm waiting. A three layer yeah. chocolate cake. Yeah. Now in between, I don't just do one layer of chocolate. I do a double layer of chocolate, and then I'm gonna cover the top yeah. with a chocolate syrup, a sweet chocolate syrup, and I'm gonna sprinkle it with pecans right on top. I'm gonna let that sit. I don't like to serve that warm. I like that go to room temperature. And when you slice it and eat it well, on top of the stew, it's time to take a nap. I can tell y'all something for sure. If there's a a bowl of Brunswick stew on the table, there'll be a bottle of hot sauce Absolutely. as well. Absolutely. And Max doesn't just go two or three drops. Max kind of puts half the bottle. I don't know how he does it, but he does. Hey, okay, great show today on Game Day TV. We appreciate you watching very much. We'll see you next week with another edition. For Max Howell, I'm Jerry Young. Thanks for watching us right here on Game Day TV.